If it gets through the Public Health Committee, it would most likely be referred to a second or possible third committee. Yeah. It will. It's going to come. It'll go to another committee. It will it's go to another go to, committee. Yeah, it's probably going to go to education. It's probably going to. This bill is a major bill. Yeah. To be clear, the vaccine changing our vaccine laws, is, as you eloquently stated, has a lot of details to it. So that means any committee of cognizance has to sign off on their section of the bill. So the schooling section has to go through after if it makes it through the Public Health Committee, through the Education Committee. If there's a change in any of the laws about civil penalties, which I don't know, or criminal penalties, which again, I don't know, that would go before me in the Judiciary Committee. If it has an expense to it, I don't know that yet, none of us knows that, Anthony and Kate would have to sign, would have to vote on that in committee, and then it would go between the House and the Senate. At this point, I don't want to at all be disrespectful to tell you, I don't know what version of the bill I may see in committee or in the House, but what's so important is that someone like yourself who's read this version has concerns speaks out. Right. And there will be a public hearing in Hartford coming up soon. If you want to make sure that one of our, our good folks, I know Will's busy with the, with the microphone, so I'm going to nominate Emily to make sure that we get your contact information so Emily can get back to you about the public hearing date. Now, I know sometimes going to Hartford is difficult for folks. You can do your online email testimony. It actually counts not only just as much, I'd say even more, mm -hmm. because if you do an emailed letter or email, regular email, every that's attached to the bill. And as it makes it through every other committee, there'll be one public hearing in public health committee. We may all see this bill in different sections, and we'll be able to click on that bill number, click on public hearing testimony, and read your letter or your email. So we can see, okay, this citizen had these five issues or these ten issues or hates the bill completely, which is all these are valid statements. These, this constituent had all these problems or just one problem, and was that resolved? Oh, good. That, got, that first problem got resolved in this committee. Let's go to the next problem with the bill. And as the bill works, we can all see what you thought at that point. It's also important if the bill changes, which I think it would substantially because it's such a big bill, if the bill changes, if your concerns are different, to continue to reach out in emails. And I know a lot of people send the group emails, the one-liner from a group that you might be on a social media group, where we, we get 100 emails that look exactly the same. Those are good. We know how people stand on exactly the same email. But someone as eloquent as you are with your thoughts, if you have specific thoughts to make sure you do tell us, it doesn't have to be 10 pages. It doesn't have to be a real letter. It can just be three lines. I have five issues with this bill. I think this bill's a great bill. I think this bill's a horrible bill. But as, if you let us know how you feel, it helps us at the time that we get to vote on the bill. And one last thing, just as important as it is to tell us how you feel when you're unhappy about something, it's just as important to tell us how you feel when you agree with something. So really, honestly, and, and to Chris's point, just a quick one-liner to us is very simple and easy for you to do, okay? But it's good for us to hear both sides. So thank you, uh, Nick. I know you've been right, waiting, so uh, I apologize. Right thank you, uh, Nick Kessel. So I'd like to give shout-outs and thank you. Shout-outs to everybody who's here. I think it's a wonderful turnout. It's, it's fantastic that um, everybody came out to, to listen and participate. Um, this is, a, to me, a historic evening. I've been involved in, in uh, local government for 40 plus years. This is the first time that representatives um, from you know, four different representatives representing the region have, have come out. And I just think it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm delighted to hear how well, how well you work together. Because so many issues, whether it's council of governments, regional council of governments, EB, uh, sub base, there's so many issues, uh, water you know, quality. So many issues that are regional, um, so it's fantastic that you're working together so, so well. Particular shout out, Kate, to, to you. Uh, as, as you know, I was involved in the library, and uh, can't thank you on behalf of the library and those of us who love the Stone Tree Library. Thank you so much for seeing to it that the bond uh, monies were released for the uh, re renovations at the library to, to help the library become more accessible. Um, 
my quick two-second thought on, on tolls, just a uh, controversial issue, and I know it's, t it's a tough issue. Uh, my only thought on a personal anecdote is, I went over the Tappan Zee Bridge, and uh, they said, you know, it's, it's electronic, so they send you a, a, a bill for 12 or $14. Shockingly, I set the thing aside, you know, more time, it, it was supposed to pay it in like two weeks, didn't pay it in two weeks. Did it go up to 25 or $30? It went up to like $70. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, the, the tolls, our, our roads get used and beat up by a lot of people uh, throughout, from the, through all over the country. Um, I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt me if we got the benefit of a few forgetful people like me who uh, not only pay the tolls, but occasionally might, might uh, and I wouldn't say whack them for, you know, four times this, the original size of it, but anyway. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, can't thank you enough for working for the region. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. I think there was one more gentleman back there that, in the back that hadn't seen him. Hi. Uh, Jim Young. The good news is I'm not going to talk about tolls. <laughs> uh, I'm from Mystic, and uh, I'm going to guess that the four of you are, are more or less generally familiar with the idea of the laws that exist in about nine other states, including now New Jersey, Maine, and Vermont, that basically say that if there's a person who's close to death, that they would have the ability in those states, and about six others, to ask a willing physician to allow them to get a prescription that would allow them to end their lives before the normal disease process would. So these are called death with dying laws, compassionate date and dying laws, sometimes physician-assisted suicide laws, and I appreciate that this might not be a bill that's immediately in any of your committees this year. It has been filed for the last six years. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about it. Um, I guess I would hope that if these bills do come before you, if you have the opportunity to look at them, that you give them a good hard thought. I really can't think of any good compelling public policy that would deny a terminally ill person the ability to end their suffering before a natural disease process would. And this actually pulls pretty well when they do pull it. So that's, uh, that's my two cents. Thank you very much. Um, I haven't uh, encountered that bill, um, but because you brought it up, I will read it in case it comes up. Um, that is a very difficult bill um, for a lot of people. I've heard discussion on it uh, since I have been up here, um, and I've heard it from both sides. Um, so uh, I will definitely read on it, um, and if you would like to um, touch base with, with us um, in the not so distant future in regards to how the outcome of our reading was, um, I would be glad to um, have discussion about it with you. Thank you. Yeah. And if I could just follow up on we <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta bring it back. Yeah, we just have these two, um, these two last questions. I, you know, uh, Chris talked about the cuts that would come <coughs> if we don't find a way to pay for our roads. And agree or disagree, um, we we have to find the money for our roads. And there's those who aren't going to mind the areas that we have to cut because those cuts don't affect some people. It, it, it doesn't affect them. Um, I'm not willing to cut from those in need. I'm not willing to cut from those who are just making it. Um, and those are the areas that we're hearing that the cuts are going to come from. Um, the rainy day fund has been an amazing thing to come and for us to be able to have. And it's a need for us to keep and a need for us not to tamper with unless we really need to tamper it, if we can, unless we go into a recession type thing. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think she, uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Liz Raisbeck uh, from Broughton, <coughs> and I'm also co chair of Broughton Conservation Advocates. First, Joe, I want to thank you so much for coming to the representative town meeting last night. 
and making your full confession that you used to love to pave over everything. <laughs> and you see the light. <laughs> that was a great statement. And we had an overwhelmingly positive vote for uh, banning single-use plastics. But uh, and even, oh, so first I want to say a bottle bill uh, that will probably rescue the redemption center that are suffering mightily from a five cent fee for, I don't know how many years, 40 years. Bottle bill will be popping out soon, I hope, and I hope you all co-sponsor. I agree, uh, yes. yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, League of Women Voters is very well watching it. Good. So, um, then, second, I just want to say climate change, of course, is really the great big gorilla that we all have to wrestle with. And um, we are particularly concerned with the killingly frack gas plant that is coming online. There's a big effort to stop it. And we want to come and chat with you about that plant and see how maybe you can help us. Difficult issue, thank you. I just want to touch briefly on the bottle bill. Um, it is coming before Environment Committee again. They are, what I've heard is they are going to raise the bill. I co-sponsored it last year. I plan on co-sponsoring again this year. And thank you for your good work with our rotten ordinance that passed yesterday. I know Joe was there. And while we're all here together, there's a lot of nights that we're all separate. Joe was with you guys in Grad, and I was in Ledger um, for an issue that they had in their town last night. But when, when we're all together, we're happy to be together. When you see one of us, we are representing everyone. Yeah. Um, and did you have a point? Yeah. Are you guys dealing with I, that? On that hasn't come up yet. Not yet. We, we, just, we just raised some bills earlier. Yeah. So we'll be happy to talk to you as, as Joe will be on the committee that deals with Killingly. Um, and we'll all be happy to talk to you more as we know. Hi, thank you very much for uh, all of you coming tonight. Um, my name is Gary Schulte, and I'm here with my boss, Gail Schulte. We, uh, we own a vineyard here in Stonington. Um, we're part of the Connecticut Farm Bureau and uh, also members of the Stonington Ag Committee. Um, the Connecticut Farm Bureau recently had a New London County uh, dinner last Friday night. Um, and it's only been going for two years now, but I haven't seen anybody there representing our little corner of uh, New London County. I'd really like to see somebody there so you understand what farmers are, are interested in and what we're facing. Um, the other thing I'd like to bring up that, that agri uh, agritourism, agriculture in general, is very important to our state uh, in a lot of economic ways. It really ties in with a lot of the uh, tourism that we have going on in this area. Um, and last year, I want to bring up one bill that happened last year. It was, uh, it's, it's now listed, it's PA 19-24, which was um, Senate Bill 647. And, it, and I followed this a little bit last year, and, and it, it, was, it seemed like it would, became a congealment of <laughs> about a half a dozen bills. Um, it was brought on by, I think, brewery, to start, um, but this massive change to what is uh, section 13-16 includes some language in there that really puts, um, does not encourage agriculture within the um, uh, fermentation or making of alcoholic beverages. So as, as vineyard owners who are gonna become um, farm winery, folks, there's no incentive, and it gives people, it puts us at a disadvantage against other people who can just purchase ingredients, ferment in a warehouse, and just open it for sale to everybody else. So the differences that were there last year are no longer there this year, and it supposedly goes into effect July 1st of 2020. I think there's some great things in that bill. But there's also some bad things that got banded together. So I'd, I'd like to see that the stoning or st so the farm wineries <clears throat> still have an advantage or or have some incentive to continue farming our own crops 
to generate our own products. And, and so I'd like to, if you can, to see if, if there's a way in which to change or delay that portion of the bill beyond July, because I think it needs fixing. Thank you. And I, I don't think any of us probably know much, much about that bill or the section you're talking about. So I think Anthony wrote down the bill number anyway. Yeah. And, and you know which bill it is, so. You want to talk on it? Well, no, we talked last year in regards to that, and um, I, and I apologize. Friday, I had another commitment, um, but that that particular dinner is in Lebanon. Um, By the way, and, I, I and, mentioned it to Heather Summers too. So, so. Well, it, but, others, but you know what, in her defense, too, we all, honestly, we're spreading ourselves very thin at this time of the year. Like and so I would, say to you, <laughs> I would say to you that, that I, am, I am active in talking with our rural caucus members, our farm caucus members, so I am learning about those things. Um, and sometimes we have to make a decision as to whether we're in a hearing or we're meeting with a constituent or we go to a dinner. I, it just... I can't, I can't honestly be in all the places, but this particular bill um, went through um, general, law. general law. It went through general law, right? And the brewery um, section. Right, right. In, in the brewery section, yes. So um, I think if it does come up again, I would encourage you, um, as we talked about last year, coming up and talking with the ranking member on that committee, the chair of that committee. Um, and us throughout the year. And, and us throughout the year, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So we don't. So we don't. So we don't introduce bills. We submit letters to chairs now because it's short section, session, and they will raise concepts. That's what they will do. They will raise concepts. So we have to send them letters. And I don't know if that's going to get raised. I don't know that you've even had your concept hearing yet. I you? don't. I send judiciary, not general. Does not general. That's right. I don't know if they've had their concept hearing. But we can reach out to the chairs for you on this to see what, yeah. what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just want to. And I think. Yeah, to say to, to follow up with Kate. Everyone. I know we have a lot of people who are advocates on different issues, yeah. even if we haven't we touched all of your issues. If you have a very important event with your group, please know that we don't always get the invites until two days before the event. And I don't want to disparage anyone's group because I know most people are volunteers. And we all do the best we can with our volunteers. On Friday night, my, on Friday, my father had surgery. My grandmother was in the hospital. I'm sorry I was not at your dinner. If there is anything that an advocate wants to make sure that we know about, don't just wait for your events. Please give us a save the date, please. Give us a save the date about an event, and we, if I can't be at your event, and Kay can't be at your event, somewhere else, we reach out to each other to try to get yeah, coverage, try to cover. and to then get a follow-up phone call meeting between us as to who's done what and who's learned what from our different constituents. Um, and if, you, if you're a member of a group and something's going on, please reach out and say this is going on, and if one of us can't be there, unfortunately, because there's a lot going on on that day, we can always try to meet with you at a separate time to hear what's important for you, yourself and groups that you're involved in. Call me first. So, 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 I take it that you don't get a notice from Connecticut Farm Bureau Association? No, we no, get an we email. Get, we, do you know how, we, honestly, we, got, we get we hundreds of emails a day. <laughs> So, so what she's saying is if it's an event that you really would like us to come to, reach out to us personally and say, hey, my association is having this event. I'd really like for you to come. Would you be able to? And if you, you probably, anyone in a group probably knows the date of the event months before the event yeah. because you were involved in the location and the planning and getting the food and all those things. We may not know about your event until two days before your event happens. And if we know a very important event's coming up months ahead of time, it very much helps us be able to block time out. And if it's during session, there's a lot of days we don't know. Yeah, we don't. We, we, like like uh, next week, I could either be there on Tuesday till till for five minutes, yeah, or I could be there till, yeah, depending on what we go into. So we've re I've had to regret a few times where I answered I was going to go and you're stuck in Hartford. And believe me, I'd rather be at the farm to table than sitting at, in, in Hartford eating off the table that we eat off of in our caucus room. Uh, it's all it's all processed food. And I would have rather food. been with you than at I the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But I will right. actually make a, make a point to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Was, there was a couple more questions. Yeah. 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 Do a couple more and then maybe they can come up to you one on one. Yeah. If you want to. Yeah. 
Um, well, we had said 7.30, so I, so I don't know. Oh, Will, uh, I do so we're going to do, um, our photographer was on? Uh, or videographer? Yes. Okay. Oh, the gentleman, I'm sorry, really someone had the mic. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm going to make this real quick. So, Joe, Christine, really thank you. You're my favorite legislator. You listen to us. You act on our request. Really appreciate it. I just want to make one observation. There were a lot of debates on the tolls. So, I just want to let you know that within my family, I got two young ones. They are 20-something. We had a big debate on this. I don't have an answer, okay? And at the end, we concluded that, yes, we need tolls. New York is charging us. Mass is charging us. New Jersey is charging us. When I drive to Washington, D.C., they are charging us. So what the heck? Why are we giving them free highways when they come to uh, you know, Connecticut and all that? Now, the observation that I wanted to make is when I look around, I look at the age of our group. <laughs> we need to bring in those 20-somethings in here so that we can listen to a very diversified opinions. Right now, everything is really one-sided. I'm on fixed income too. I don't want to pay, but I love to listen to the 20 years olds. It's their future. The bridge will collapse. They may not be able to go to work. They may have some creative solutions. So, you know, let's bring the young ones in here Get them engaged, get them involved. Let's listen to a diverse opinion. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Our last question, but we'll be sticking around. Yes. I know it's too little and too late because the decision came down yesterday. It was in the paper about the Port Authority and the New London Wind Farm and everything. And I just want to say that there were so many things that were questionable about it. I'd like to hear your comments, I mean, the, the agency seems to have so many issues, the fact that we have to guarantee the cost overruns, the fact that New London, which is a historic port, is now being decimated, basically, the National Register uh, peers filled in, and it just sounds a little to me like Port Trumbull. I would say that the difference with Port Trumbull is we kicked people out of a neighborhood that did nothing. This has been an underperforming pier, uh, and, and being a rep from London and actually growing up in the projects overlooking that pier, that, that was, it's been a desolate place for a very, very long time. Even, even with Lit Logis Tech over the past 20 years, uh, it's, it's underperformed to, to its potential. Uh, and the fact that that is, it is, you know, it's a historic pier that, you know, it, it does deserve attention, but for the London taxpayers that are receiving $75,000 a year, for that entire property, they can't get really excited about leaving it as is and keeping the seventy-five thousand dollars a year because without upgrade, no, seven seventy-five thousand is what they get now currently. So, so, so New London for the past twenty years, and imagine being a New London resident that owns a home down next to the beach, and you're paying more taxes for your home than almost ten acres on the water up here that's commercial where cruise ships flow to, that, that you, you are paying more in taxes to the town, to city of London than that pier. And I think that's gonna be one of those, it's tough because, you know, the, we're always gonna say it was a good deal or it wasn't a good deal, but, but there's a lot of moving parts to that deal. There really, really are. And for me to support it and to tell you right now that I, I, me and Anthony, we don't sleep. You have butterflies in your stomach. The one, the one thing we do have to lean back on are the, the people that are involved in Orsted and in Eversource, they are real players. I, I mean, I, I grew up in London, and we've heard many, many times that someone was gonna come in and save the day, whether someone bought some old building downtown, and they were gonna make the best ever, and then we find out the person never even renovated a bathroom, or never did, never did anything and just said they did. And, and that's why I felt comfortable, because it, it was our major power company, and it was the, one of the largest producers of wind energy in the world, and they say they, they need that peer, to be redone, to hold the weight of what they're doing. This, this is so substantial and so game-changing that, again, I, it's hard. As far as the historic value goes to the pier, I think any person that's in London would say, I want the taxes. I understand that the pier has been, it's old and it's been there a long time, but, but for, for actual functionality, I think that they're gonna go for that. And I understand, believe me, we're the ones voting on it and I'm the one getting, and Anthony's getting killed on Facebook and the paper 
Anytime there's a negative article, they're the same. Where are the state reps? We're in the meetings, and we're learning about it. Again, it's we're getting the real information in real time by the folks that are doing the investing. And I understand even being on the hook for the state. I mean, I get to hear that from a lot of different parties. <clears throat> where you know, if it doesn't go all right, where else? Do, who else gets a guarantee from from Big Brother that everything's going to work out? But to make a big deal like that work, sometimes you, you have to you have to put your neck out there. And and I can I can guarantee you, this will be a recording <laughs> that that somebody's going to use against me if this all goes sour. And it, and any deal could go sour. But I, I feel very comfortable after after four years. I think we've been attending meetings about the wind energy and, and, and having folks come and, and see the work that we do locally. Um, it, it's, again, it's just, it's one of those, it's gotta be a gut feeling sometimes. And, and <clears throat> the sad part is, which you mentioned that the Port Authority has had its, its fallouts and it's down and, 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 and improprieties and all these different things. But what has never changed is Eversource and Orsted are interested in building, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and one thing for sure, I, I am a sheet metal worker that's been involved at Millstone for four shutdowns. When folks say that Millstone's, there's folks that think Millstone's never gonna shut down. I can honestly tell you that in 15 years, the producer of 50% of the electricity in Connecticut will be here no longer. And we have to get on board with the wind to start replacing the nuclear energy. And hopefully in 15 years, we may not be talking about this. Maybe they, the, the flying car took care of it. I don't, who knows what technology brings, but right now we don't have a plan. I, I should say we don't have a plan, we do. And I feel a little bit better about that because there will be windmills that are replacing some of that electricity. So again, I, I understand your concern, Terry, and I, because we have it too. I think, I think I'm speaking for Nolan too, but we don't sleep at night sometimes. Fingers crossed. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so we're gonna wrap up. Um, again, Cannot thank everyone enough for coming. Um, and we do these not just here, we do it in Groton, we do it in New London. We try to move around so that everybody has an equal opportunity to be in their hometown. It's our um, biggest audience. So, yeah, Yay. so far, this has been great. So, thank you so much. And please just, you can come up to us afterwards. We'll be here for a little bit. I just want to ask you one question. Thanks. Um, that I would like to get. You, all four of you guys to be on board to advocate for us because out of 130 million dollars on the hotel tax the state only budgets 4.2 million for the entire state of Connecticut out of that 1 million dollars is for advertising the entire state of Connecticut which is awful no we all agree we've been fighting no but the thing that. is but so we're not we i mean we're up at the, but we're up at tourism caucus there, the not tourism. one of you were at the at the meeting at the tourism caucus. No, I was in another meeting, but I, okay. I, I'm but, part of the tourism caucus. But I just want to be. We all are. Thank you. Guys to and we will really be here focus. for more questions and more discussions. We're not cutting anyone off. Um, but we will be here for more questions. Thank you. 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 Thank